Okay, welcome back everyone. So we are going to start in a few minutes. So hope everybody is has come back from the break and joined this session. Just a minute. Hope you can hear me and hope you can see the P uh, my screen. If you can say yes, then I can proceed. OK. Perfect, so we were about to discuss how we can secure the cognitive service within an enterprise application, and we talk about a service called Key Vault. So let us implement, let us understand and then implement first. And as I said, whether we are making a call to the cognitive service from an applications or maybe from a REST client, in both cases, we need to supply the credentials in two parts. One is the endpoint and another is the key. So what we are discussing that putting a key or giving a key to the developer can me misuse the key. They can regenerate the key. So if you regenerate a key of a cognitive service, all the application who were using the key, the old key, will fail to get access to the cognitive service any given point in time. So that's how we talk about how am I going to protect the key, but by not giving the key to the developer, by keeping the key outside of the development environment, and we talk about another service on the Azure call, something called Key Vault. Okay, something called Key Vault. So, where are keys, certificates? or other confidential informations can be stored. So the first thing we have to go and deploy this key vault as your key vault service. So I can go to the, and then I can put the key, this key, inside the key wall. So I can remove the key from here. Then application has to go and get the key from the key wall next time. 
with the help of something called managed identity that what we discuss. The service principle that we discussed. So we need to create that service principle in order to access the key wall for the key the client application is going to use. So let us go to the management portal. So we are going to create a key wall. So we go to all service. We go to some security category. You get to see a key wall infrastructure and network security section. So we go and create a key wall. This is what the definition Azure Key Vault is a cloud service used to manage keys, secrets, and certificates. So Key Vault eliminates the need of developer to store security information in their code. It allows you to centralize the storage of your application secret, which greatly reduces the chances that secret may be leaked. Key Vault also allows you to securely store secret and the key backed by the hardware security module. So this is hardware security module use. Are the federal information processing standard. 140-2 level 2 validated. It's a top securities that is being applied to the Azure Key Wall. So Key Wall provides a log of all access and use attempts of your secret so you have complete audit trail for the compliance so we pick up the same resource group like last time we deploy a cognitive service now we are deploy as your key vault so here it's a demo key vault So picking up that pricing tier in the region because we have been using the same region is TOS. Soft delete. It's for 90 days. Like if you have deleted the key, you can still recover your key until you complete the 90 days. So rest will keep default at this moment. The networking what we talked about so we'll just create a key wall at this moment so let's create that
OK, the deployment is done, so I can go to that particular resource. I can. In fact. Uh, let that. Information paste overview paste loaded. This is what my key vault is. So I go to the key vault with a quick access. We did the, all the overview detail out there, and now we can go to the secret. Because the keys, API key is being treated as a secret here. So I want to create a secret to store my API key. So I go and create this. I can give the name of the secret as a cognitive service key. And I go and get the key from here. This is the key that I want to eliminate from my code. And I'm just putting the key into the key vault. And this key can be accessed by this particular name. That is the key name to get access to. So with that, we can just rest. We are keeping default. So I can just add. Uh, one more access control there. Add the role assignment. Evil administrator to the current user. Then I can go again. That is the key that we are looking for. And try to create this. So we can create now that secret. So the permission was not there to create a key inside a key vault. So I have given a permissions of the key administrator. This is what is called a, a role that I have because this is me. So I'm just giving a key vault administrator a role to this particular key vault that I can do all kind of administrations on the key, creating and deleting keys. OK, and then we can go. And create a service principle because that is what service principle is an identity. OK, so we have to create service. Principle. that we need to create so it is just an identity now what is that it means whenever this application or any kind of request will go to the key wall asking for a key the key wall is going to basically ask for an identity. So the application has to give an identity that is called application identity. We call as a service principle also. So I have to create a application identity. To get access a key from the key vault. 
and in Microsoft as your term, it's called as a service principle. Identity is a, is a basically a kind of uh, identity which is which is uh, beyond the human identity. Like suppose you have an email ID and a password that could be also an identity. But there are different identity that we can create that we can showcase in front of the resources before we get access to them. A princip service principle is one of them. So application must use a service principle and that service principle is not just an identity. The service principle will have the permissions also the role also to get access to the key wall. What kind of permissions that we need to check to access the secret? So we can do that from the command line, creating it. So this could be sort of if I go and take a look. This is what we are going to go and see. The AZ command as your active directory service principle. Create for RBAC role based access control. I can give a name, any name out there. Service principle name, so I can say. Key vault. Or we can say. Cognitive SRV. SP. Service principle. This is a format of the name that can be given. So I'm using role is a owner. And the scope for the subscription so I can get the subscription. ID here. This is the subscription ID. So I get the subscription ID and put it here. And the resource group, the current resource group that I'm working so far. This is the resource group where my resource is available. So this is the command that I want to give from the CLI. This is a CLI command, command line interface. OK, so I can just get that code. I can go to the command line. And I can paste this code. One second. So I should be able to get it done there. So I may go and open a Visual Studio code. So now I can go and get these things to the command line. 
So let us read this command one more time. This is the command AZ. AD Active Directory SP is a service principle. Create for RBAC role based access control because. This service principle also associated with a role that they can interact with. The underlying key vault to get or to retrieve the key from the key vault. So here you go with this. As you can say, the role we made it owner. So we will have a owner permissions. In this service principle. Then I can go and create this. And this is the output that has given to me. I can copy this. And I can paste. This is the output of the existing command. Of my. CLI. Command. So in this output, this is an unique object ID that is given to me. This is a display name, so I can give any name out there. And the password. And the tenant. So this is something what we did in the. So if I go to my active directory and now it is called as a microsoft entra so you can go to the all services microsoft entra id if i put it in here So that is the Microsoft Entra ID. That is an active directory. So now we can see the list of application. So I can just delete few of them. I want to keep only the current things that I have gone and use it. So it's already deleted. OK, that's fine. So we go to. So looking at our. Applications just now what we have created. And go to the app registration and we can see. This is the applications that we see and we have this. Client ID. Object ID what is being given to me. It is the same object ID, the client ID that we received here. The name could be any names and the password and the 10. 
could have given him something like this. So this is what this information would be used as an identity. That informations can be used as identity to get access e from e vault. Because without an identity, key vault is not going to allow you to access the key. OK. So now. We have the key wall and we got our. <clears throat> identities. With app ID, password and the tenant ID, so these are. Important informations. And now we can go and add a policy on the key vault. Like suppose if I go to the key vault now, we can go to the access policies. Or maybe we can just go from the CLI, so we can use this. So my key wall name is this is what I'm going to change this. So what I'm saying that I'm I want to set a policy on this particular key wall for this object ID. OK, that is what we must or we can query the object ID before. So by using. App ID. But object ID, we can take it from there also, but. Let me see. So what is the object ID for this app ID? So I can just. Go and see this. OK, so we query the object ID or maybe we can go to my. Microsoft Entra. And app registration. If I go to that app registration, that is the object ID that we can get. So we can make use of this object ID here. So what essentially we are saying that. I want to set a policy. To get access to the key wall. For an object ID. This one. And the permission to just to get the list. The list means I can read. To get a list, I can read and list the keys. Suppose I may have multiple keys. I want to list it. I want to 
get a get permissions that I can read the keys from my application. So if anybody comes with an object ID, because this is the object ID is crucial for us. If anybody come because this object ID is associated with this client ID, client app IDs that you can see out there. This is a two one. So anybody come with this particular app ID and this object ID. So I will be given permissions on the key wall to read the key and to list the keys. And that is what the policy that we are setting at this moment through the command line. So this is what we are doing. So we can just enable RBAC authorization so we can just make it This one. OK, so that is something that we can see out there. So now I can go back to my key wall. So we should be able to see that the policy is being changed or set. So this is what we can see. Update security policy setting for key wall. Auto generated this one out there. So. So we can just go and set it up with the object ID. So I'll be just using a couple of more things because of my subscription limitation. So, but I, I can always go and make use of it one more time. Otherwise, that is fine. I will be using my keyboard name. OK, so just give me a minute. So I, if I go and keep changing my uh, permission stuff, just a minute. Just a minute, I'm just going to add one more.
So I'm just validating my in the back end my subscription detail. So just give me a minute to I will try and assign the permissions that I can do things for that. So I can go back to my policy out there. OK, so I'll come back to that in some time from now because my subscription that I'm using is just protecting to use it, the key vault policy at this moment. So I need to unlock that. It will take some time. But uh, what. You must understand what we are explaining this and now. I will showcase this application. If I get till then the unlock is being done, then probably we should be able to implement it. Otherwise, I will just go and explain the steps what we supposed to do. Because in one hand we are, you know, just uh, trying to put my key inside a key wall. In other hand, we are trying to get access to the key, but we need to create a policy on the key vault who can access or who cannot. We have created an identity. So identity detail is already being given to me. Now I'm just getting. Configured with the policy for that we need a permissions. What is not at this moment associated with my subscription? So I just made a request to that. So once it is unlocked, I should be able to set that policy on my key wall. OK. So having said that, now coming back, this is the last things that we are doing. <clears throat> OK, so why the role assignment needed in the key a wall service, whereas the other service we don't have explicitly? Oh, yes, like. Uh, uh, yes, uh, see, uh, Key Vault is a service that does not compare with in context of accessing the Key Vault with any other services because the Key Vault is a service where you go and put your secrets. So it means the permissions and the role based access is extreme, extremely critical in context of the Key Vault. Remember that. OK, because it is not just any other service that you have an API. You are making a call to an API by having a keys and the endpoint. It's not like that. Because the key is the ultimate, because once you get a key, you can do anything. If you don't get a key, you won't be able to do anything. It is just other way around. So key is the the core informations that everybody is looking for to make a call to a cognitive service to to go and get access a data from a database or maybe go and get a data from the storage or maybe any kind of thing without a key you won't be able to make a request to it that is critical so whoever is managing a key wall so you need an explicit permission for all kind of activity that you would be doing I could create a key wall, but now when I'm setting a kind of policy on my key walls, so my, uh, you know, uh, my role is not enough to configure the policy on the key wall. So I need a specific role to configure the policy on the key wall, and that is what I'm going to unlock in some time. If I get it, I can show you. So otherwise I can just walk you through what need to be done. Because it is key wall, because you are putting. Very. Confidential information into the. So I did not see the query, so now I saw the query. I'm responding to your query. The save Kumar. OK. So that is why it is different from any other service because we are dealing with the credentials out there. OK. 
So now if I go back. So if I would like to see. My LS. I would like to go to my key wall climb. These are the files so I can open it in Visual Studio Code, but in the meantime. What we need to install because this application has to install few things. The first we need to install. Azure.ai.text analytics because this application is going to analyze the text. Second, I'm going to go and install. Sorry. Azure.identity. And third, we are going to use the key vault. And this is being incorporated somewhere here. You can see as your security dot key vault as your identity, identity using with service principle. And then finally we are going to make a call to the cognitive service. So in the previous example, we had the key within my configuration files, but this time we do not see the key of the cognitive service. We see the name of the key vault. The tenant ID. That was given to me from here. That is the tenant ID. Service principal app ID. That is the app ID that we get. And the final one. The password that we have received. That password cannot be used to get access to the cognitive service. This is a password for the service principle. For an identity. So this is the information that we need to fill up. So we did not mention anywhere. Are. This key which we took it from the cognitive service. So where this key has gone, this key has gone to the key wall. Because we are protecting the key by putting them inside the key wall. So now I'm telling my application. Now I'm telling my applications that you go and get this key from the key wall, but for that the application has to have an identity and the combining all this information, the application will go and make a request on the key. So if all this correct, the application can retrieve a key or get a key from the key wall and then make a call to the cognitive service. So you're protecting the key. The bottom line is you're protecting the key. So rest is all about. Application. Programming model, so here we say it, we want to read all this information that is being configured in the app setting dot JSON. That's number one. Number two. We are going to find the key wall names, so there is a. Key wall name out there, so I can go to my key wall name. And this is the exact. URI, this is called vault URI. The same thing, the vault.azure.net. You can see the same on vault.azure.net. 
So only just we can change the key wall name here. So this is where your key vault is up and running. We collectively take all the credential information, app ID, tenant ID, password. And it is being concatenated with the key vault URI. So eventually we are creating a complete request object that I should be able to make a request to the key vault to get a keys. Now, if you remember that the name of the key that we have given called cognitive service key, if you go to the secret, we do have a secret by the name called cognitive service key. So if you go there, you can see this is your key, which is sitting out there inside the key wall. inside the key wall, what we are looking at at this moment. So this is the key that I'm referring to go and so it is only possible because the key wall client and the gate secret that we are talking about because key wall client has already got all the information to talk to the key wall and get access to the key. So once we get access to the key, we stored here is an encrypted key that we are going to get out here. And we are going to get the values as an actual key that I'm going to use while I'm making a call to the cognitive service. So where do I making a call to the cognitive service? Yes, here as your key credentials with the keys and we are making a call to the detect language with this because already the client has got that credential so far. So rest is all about the code, but what we are trying to figure out at this moment is how to protect your key by putting this key inside the key vault. So we are getting a key here. But to get a key, I need this information. So all as a raw, I am not going. Anybody cannot go and get a key. So to get a key, you must have those credentials and it would be controlled by the Azure Active Directory with the permissions. And permission is most critical one because you won't be able to change anything on the keys because you can only read because that is the permission that I was trying to give on this key wall for this particular application. So while this application will go and ask for a key, you will only get the key in a read only. So you won't be able to go and use the key to change the key anywhere, wherever you want. that you can produce the key in front of the con cognitive service that you should be able to call the cognitive service later on. Okay, so this is the only thing that we should be able to go and kind of configuring the policy, as I said before also, that is the policy that we need to go and access policy not available at this moment. So we should be able to kind of, you know, go with this policies and we should be able to sort of secure our key by putting inside the key wall what we are discussing at this moment.
All right, so that is one thing that we can go and make use of it because this is the key that we really gone and make use of it. So, yeah. So rest is all the code, so I can go and get my change of these things like my 6.0. And I should be able to restore and build dot net restore. And uh, we can say a dot net build. All OK, only we won't be able to run it because the policy is not yet unlocked for me to. I can set the policy for my key vault that this application. Go and get. So I can just remove this. Yep, yeah, I mean like, uh, yeah, so rest is all OK. Then we should be able to go and run it once this policy that I'm talking about in the key wall can be accessed out there. And once it is coming out, uh, uh, I sh I should be able to just run this applications to get a key from the key wall and produce the key in front of my cognitive service to call the cognitive service. So hope you have understood, you know, the whole workflow that we are discussing because this is important in context of enterprise application. Because if it is a one call, that is fine. But if you have a robust applications that you are going to use multiple services. And you should be able to protect and you are having a lot many developers which, is, which may collectively working on the same project. And your responsibility is that how you are going to protect the confidential information from the developer by taking out of those informations and putting inside the key wall. But subsequently, we need to know the process of getting key out of the key vault also. Okay. So that is one uh, about the key vault. So as I said, once I am unlocking with this particular uh, policy stuff, then we can simply go and assign the policy and then we should be able to. Run this code. So let's go to the next part. In the cognitive service itself, so what we are discussing. Let me go back to the. Yeah. So let me share the screen with you. Now another aspect of the cognitive service is that to running a cognitive service inside a container. OK, this is the container what we are discussing what we are about to discuss. Now we all of us know maybe you are aware of the containerized workload or not, but yes, the containers are the different way of running your APIs, running your. Code, 
running your database. It's a lightweighted, isolated box where we can run our API with the self-contented dependencies. Means everything that we need to run my API would be made available inside the container. Now, as of now, we are making a request to the cognitive service. We do not know where cognitive service is running. We only know that cognitive service is running on the Microsoft Azure cloud platform. It is not running on my system. It is not running in my own account. It, it may be running on their own infrastructure. OK. But if I want a control on the cognitive service running in my own environment and that environment today is called as a containers so i can create container i can bring that cognitive service inside my container and make them up and running so any container that we are going to create it is always start from a container image so like in cognitive service, if you want to run inside the container, we need to have a cognitive service container image. So container images are available for commonly used cognitive service API. And it can be deployed to a local Docker host, Azure Container Instance, Azure Kubernetes Service, and few more, where we can run container I mean, cognitive service container from the cognitive service container image. So it basically enables the more control over the data sent to the public cognitive, co co cognitive service endpoint. Because suppose I want to analyze an image through a cognitive service. So my image, my photo need to be sent to the public endpoint. Public endpoint means the cognitive service where it is running because that, that service can be called publicly from anywhere. So I can just basically go and make a call to this cognitive service publicly. That is what we have learned in the previous example. But the data that is being sent to the cognitive service is also going to be public because you know i do not know how my cognitive service is going to protect my data because data has already gone from me it has gone to the cognitive service i do not know if those personal data will be protected by cognitive service or not so i don't have any control on that but by running this cognitive service within a container so you will have the control over the data so cognitive service resource is still required and container must communicate with it to send billing data. Of course, ultimately you may run your runtime or your running environment may be in container, but eventually you are making a call to the cognitive service by connecting to an underlying endpoint. Which is being, which is basically deployed on the Microsoft Azure. So you have to still pay for the cognitive service. You are going to pay for the service where you are going to run containerize. On top of that, you are also going to pay for the cognitive service. Means, suppose I am running a cognitive service in an ACI, Azure Container Instance. So you have to pay for the Azure Container Instance. And you have to pay for the cognitive service also. So that is how this particular workflow works. So container image deployed to a host. The container host who can basically host a container. And that is the image that you can see on the top. So your client app will send the data to the container instance 
and receive response. But the container instance where your cognitive service is going to run will make a call to the actual cognitive service, which is there as an API. So uses metrics required for the billing are sent to the cognitive service resource in Azure. Right, so how many times that you have run this cognitive service? All would be recorded from here itself. So that is something that you need to, you must understand. Now let us go and see how we can run a cognitive service inside a container. So we will go that to our virtual machines. OK, so where I want to run, let us understand this architects or what we are going to do. So I'm saying that I can run a container inside a Azure service called Azure. Container instance. This is an Azure service. where we can run a container. This is a Docker container. Docker container. Now, to run a container, we have to have a Docker image. OK, so it means I can only. Create a container from. A Docker image. Now this Docker image that we are talking about. Is. It is not our own image, it is a cognitive service. service image. So I will get it from some kind of repository. Some kind of image repository. So somebody has created an image. I am not going to create an image of the cognitive service, so it is a ready made image. I will bring it from the repository and I will create a container inside a cloud service called Azure Container Instance. Now I want to do a text analytics hypothetically. Or say language detection. This is what I have been doing. Detecting a language. By calling a cognitive service. From our application. 
or maybe image analysis. Okay, it could be any kind of operations that I want to perform through a cognitive service. Now, rather than cognitive calling a cognitive service from the API, now I'm going to go and interact with my client application is going to go and interact with Azure Container Instance. Because now my cognitive service is going to run here. With your own. Service boundary. But for billing. Although we are running, we are protecting because all these things is happening here for but for billing. You need to go to the actual. Cognitive service because to run a cognitive service, I need to produce a key. I must have created a cognitive service. I need to put the key also. API. For billing. But the processing of your. Will be in ACI. As your container instance. So that is what the architecture. So if you do, if you have any kind of, you know. Idea about what is Docker container, what is Docker image? So then you will be able to anticipate what I'm talking about, but. We can run our application inside the container, but instead of running our application, we are running the cognitive service inside the container. So what is the benefit of Azure like the cloud platforms? We all of us know. The Azure enables the application developer to focus. On the infrastructure for their own code. While. Benefiting from scalable service that are managed by Microsoft. However, in many scenarios, the organizations required more control over their service infrastructure. And the data that is passed between. <laughs> services. So in that context, as your AI service. Like cognitive service can be packaged and deployed in a container. Enabling organizations to host as your AI service in their own infrastructure. It may be. On their physical server. Or maybe container instance what we are doing it or maybe as your Kubernetes service cluster. So containerize as your AI service. Need to communicate with Azure base as your AI service account to support the billing. That is what we are talking about. But application data is not passed. To the backend service means the actual. Cognitive service. 
So then the organizations can have greater control over the deployment configurations of their container, enabling custom solutions for authentication, scalability, and other considerations. So, and now we have to go and create ACI as your container instance. So I can go to my all service. I can go to container and we can get to see something called container instance. So I'll go and add a new container instance. So I can go and pick up my resource group. I can give a name. And demo ACI. And rest we can go and. And we want to go and get the image from a particular repository that I was talking about. So here I'm getting an image of the cognitive service from the Microsoft public repository. So I'm just using this. So this is the image locations. And the name of the image is as your cognitive service text analytics language. And the latest. That is MCR. It is Microsoft repository with the Microsoft.com. And what is that image is all about? And that image is as your cognitive service from the text and because it's a multi service. So we are using this. And container instance can be configured by the size that you want. Now the instance where I'm going to run my container, uh, run my cognitive service has one virtual CPU and 1.5 GB of memory. So I can go and change it. So I can say I can go up to 12 GB of memories. The one CPU, we can increase the CPU and so on and so forth. And we are just saying, OK, that is what I want. So I'm taking the image, the Docker image from a, a repository, what we are saying at this moment. And the host machines, I increase the size of the RAM to run my container inside the container instance. In the networking, I can just go and change the port number from 80 to suppose 5000. This is what we can see. So I would be making this container instance available in the 5000 port by removing the default 80 port. Then I go to an advance. So I want to restart the container on failure. That is the policy that we select. And I'm going to get the key name as an API key. Mark as a secure is yes. I want to secure the API key. So my API key would be this key. Because still for the billing purpose, we need that. And 
And then the other one would be billing. That is also being say yes. And it is all about the endpoint. And then license agreement with this, we can just simply say accept. And we do not have any command to run there inside the container instance. So with that, we can go and create the container instance. So container instance has started deploying. It will take one to two minutes to complete that process. Okay, still taking time, so we just need to wait.
Just a minute. So it is taking a bit more time, but we still need to go and wait. So until we complete this deployment, we won't be able to get access to this one. <clears throat> OK, so we can see this. I can go to resource. I can pin it to the dashboard. So this is what we got our e vault. Uh, so ACI, sorry. So now once this ACI, we can go and check whether my container is running or not. You can see the status is running at this moment. This is started. All the log is started the container with a one instance of the container that you can see out there. In fact, you can go inside to the container also. If it is. Sorry, if you can go uh, to the. Yeah, so if you go there. So you can see. So this is a Linux container. So where it's like a Linux machine, so where you are running your cognitive service. For billing, it will go and connect to the cognitive resources that we have created, but all the processing of the data to give me the response will be done from this container instance. Okay, so this container is up and running. Now where this container is running, so we are going to get an IP address. This is the IP address, the public IP address to get access to. So now we can go and uh, create some kind of maybe we can say. Yeah, so I can go to my. Notepad. So I can say Docker run, so if I want to run a container or uh, if I want to access a container because the container is already running. So I can I don't have to make this code, so I may have to use the curl command. With an IP address, so my IP address coming from here. So I replace this IP address. So what I'm saying that. 
I am using a curl command to post an HTTP request on this IP address on the port number 5000. If you remember that in the networking, we use port number 5000. That is map with my port that is running inside the container. And the rest is to what type of service that I am. And then content type, documents, and the text that we are working out there. So now we are not passing the key because the key is being given as an environment variables at the time of creating the con so container has that. I don't have to pass it from here. The last time we passed this key from here itself. So container instance will make use of that particular key and do the billing stuff. But for running, I don't need a key anymore. Only container instance need a key internally connect to the cognitive service. For me, I need to produce the data. I need to send the data, whether it is image, whether it is text. So we are creating two documents. The first document is this one, and the second document is this one with an ID one and ID two. And that is not just a document, it is a documents, as you can see out there. So if I go with this, let me go and create a file there. So to make it in one line, but that is what it is. So I just go and select this. And I can go to my. So this is the command that I'm the curl means just a making an HTTP request on a particular. Endpoints that is the IP address in our case four colon one fifty six one fifty one two colon five thousand, and the rest is identifying what we are passing into my cognitive service, which is running inside. So I'm talking to the container instance. So this time I'm not talking to the cognitive service directly. What we did in the previous curl uh, command. For billing, which key was used? For billing, the cognitive service key was used, uh, Siv Kumar. Any specific region I have the name of the API key instead of. Uh, no, this is uh, in the. Uh, uh, in the image. There must be a code. Somebody has created an image. And in that code, they mention API key. You know, that's why we have to write API key because we are using image created by somebody else. If I would have created own image, I could have changed this API key to something else. Because, because we are not creating that image. We got it from Microsoft repository, you know. Somebody has written a code there. So to retrieve the API key, they might use API key not something else. Yeah, the previous one for billing. Yes, the cognitive service key that we use before, like this is the key that for billing that we are using. This is for the cognitive service key. So we have a cognitive service already created there. This is the cognitive service and if it's a key for billing, we are using this key. This is the key that we are using. That is an API key that we have configured in ACI as your container instance. So now we go and request for that. 
Okay, so we can just see Carl could not be resolved the post. So let me see out there. Yeah, so it is finally it is detected. It's saying the first one is English with a name confidence score 98%. Second ID is being detected language as a friends. And the score is 100%, no warning and no stuff. So this is what we got from here itself. So I just go and copy this one more time. As many times I can make a call. So this is what is detected again, the same one. OK, so this is what essentially that we need to figure out like uh, yeah so this is basically to making a request or you can make use of the postman as i said before also you should be able to do it And now if I go back. See it is still status is running out there. So you should be able to see in the log. OK, so all the details which is logging here itself. This is the property port is 5000 as you can see. One CPU to get all these things you can see the API key is being hided because we want to make it secure because we select the secure one. While we are reading it from R. Fine, so that is what is being run on top of yes, of course you can. So if you can find yeah, see if you can you have to just go and find your image of the computer vision service to do the image and the video analysis that you want to do by posting your image and video into the ACI as your container instance. And there we can talk about a GPU as it's the video is yes. So we got that's what we said we have to have a control over the infrastructure. From the security point of views or from the accessibility point of view and from the resource allocations point of view because you will have the control. So how big container that you want to create in order to process your videos in order to process your images. And that is the additional benefit that you are going to get by using this kind of technologies what we are looking at now. services eventually what we are doing at this moment. OK, so finally what we have to do, we will be going and looking at. Uh, 
the monitoring option because we talk about how to monitor the cognitive service that would be the last in this module so we can finish by completing the monitoring cognitive service now what is monitoring basically the monitoring is like once you run a service once you have gone and deploy a resource since it is being deployed on the data center it is extremely critical to know that how this services is up and running because it is not your infrastructure okay it is been uh what you call as uh, it is it is the it is since it is a platform as a service you have no control with the infrastructure you have no control with their configuration so you have given a space and you are going there and running your system running your code running your api so in context of monitoring we should be able to get that data to understand the detail of our service how my service is up and running like for example in the monitoring of the cognitive service i can go to the cognitive service there is a monitoring section there is something called matrix now hypothetically i go and look for total call count that i make so how many times so far i make call to the cognitive service you see the number of time that i call is gone up to five in fact and that is what so i can keep monitoring like suppose you have a restriction this cognitive service cannot be called more than five times so that if somebody has made a call in more than five times so i should be given a notification by sending a mail okay so that is something that we can always do and now how am i going to send how am i going to send a notification so that i can configure from the alert so i want to create a rules from the alert and i can say the telemetry is on what i want to create an alert in the total call i can see those graph over last a week or last 6 hours like this is what we are getting the total number of call is being made so far so if it is a greater than a particular values the threshold sensitivities we are just making at so we can see that the greater than count is threshold values would be something like 5 that's what i was talking about if my cognitive service is being called more than 5 times
we should be given that alert. That is what we are seeing. So I'm creating a threat static threshold. That is basically saying that threshold value would be five. And we are not adding any other dimension to it. So straight away we are going for an action. So what actions that I want to do if the condition is being satisfied? So we are making it the global one. So because we cannot create an action groups and deployed in all the regions. So we made it global, so it would be available globally. I give the name of the action groups a demo action group. Display name. I just give a, any name out there. A notification I want to receive. With. An email ID, suppose I'm giving my own email ID to receive the email. About that. Incident that is basically if somebody has made a call to the cognitive service more than five times. So let's go and make use of it. I can get an SMS by typing. The phone number also here and the voice call also I can receive and we can receive a notifications from my mobile application. If the notification service is being configured on. On the cloud. So I am using and enable the common alert schema, so that is something that we are giving and give a name semi notification and then we can go to an action one is to sending a notifications like okay telling the stakeholder so what is happening or what we can do we can also make a call to the other system to do something We can make a call to other service like Azure Functions, Logic App, and the webhook to make a call to an API or whatever. So we don't have any other service at this moment. We can skip, but you can respond to that event by making a call to other service. So you can automate the entire process. It is not just a notification receiving a mail. What you want to do? You can do it that way also, so you can increase the threshold limit or something like this. So you can go and create this. So once we are creating this, we can go back and see. That is what it is. Custom properties, we don't need it. The detail. We can give a name call. Demo alert. And we can create this alert now.
right? So it's got created now, so you can just go to an alert rules that we have created, which is up and running at this moment. Enable, we can disable that anytime. So if I go and keep calling this service, because ultimately the ACI will make a call there. So we just need to see the total number of call that we made to the cognitive service where we have configured. For last six hours. So if you go back to our monitoring system. We can see the total number of call. We should be able to see more on it. As of now, it is showing five only, but of course we are going to go and. So once. I have to go and check my alert rules out there, so. Review of. The alert there. We can go to the history out there, so data has not come. As of now, so we can see the call history, alert history, so how many times the alert is being invoked so far. So to get the data, it may take some time, but you will be given the email. Related to your. Yeah, so that is something that you are you are configuring. And you should be able to get a subsequent. Uh, notifications from the mail itself, so that is something you will be receiving if you have configured. But the monitoring what I'm saying this monitoring is something what we are looking at at this moment that we have control over our service to understand how my service is being used so far. OK, so that is the complete uh, the the cognitive service what we are discussing so far. So what we have learned so far, we create a resource group. Cognitive service resource dot net SDKs. We call it from the REST API. We try to implement the key vault due to the permission issues, but we have got the workflow of this one, and finally, the monitoring the cognitive service for better cases that to, I can have control on my services going forward. OK, so with that, we'll take a break. So if you have any questions, so we'll be taking a break of 15 minutes and after that we'll come back and we'll see one more service, then we'll wind up for the day.
OK, we are starting now. So hope. Uh, you are back from the break. Just a minute. OK, so let me take you to the. Yeah, so. The previously we had a problem with uh, that key vault one, so I just fix it. As I said, we create an access policy now. For this. Now access policy is available for me. So we are just giving an access policy and get in list. For this particular service principle name that we have created. Through this. Command, so if you remember that. I can just. This is what the service principle name that we have created by. Giving this command. So as I said. At the time of. Giving this command, the service principle name was different. Yet for our back. So now I'm using. This credential. So like key vault name, cognitive service endpoint, tenant ID, app ID, password, but I do not have the cognitive service key. And we are taking it programmatically, the cognitive service key uh, from this particular uh, name. OK. And this application is being given permission to read that a key from the key ball. So now it is working because I just unlock that. And now if you run this application, key ball client. And we can say hello. That will give you English. Say bonjour. That will give you French. And then it will give it Spanish. So this is working perfectly fine. So I can just quit this one. So what we saw here, access permissions, the policy, what we are not able to access before. Now we can go and get access to this. And uh, yeah, I mean like uh, this is as a permission. So anytime we can go and create. So suppose we have a secret. We have a secret. And I want to give a all permission to the secret. But to whom I want to give the permission. So I can go and. Get those a service principle. That is the service principle that we have created. You can select that. And that service principle, the application is going to use to get access to the key vault secret. And that is the policy. I said I am giving all permission. Here it was only get and list permission would be given to this. So I removed this the previous permission. But I have just enhanced the permissions to give everything. 
So I should be able to do everything from my code, not only just reading a key, but we should be able to delete the key from the key wall also because the permission says that on the secret. OK, so that is also working, so we'll go to the next uh, service. Let's go to the next one. So this time I'm going to go and take a look at another cognitive service, which is typically go and use with the NLP, natural language processing. Now, what do we mean by that? And this is being divided into two categories. One is to analyzing the text, like I said before. If somebody has written a review on a particular product, but if I use my AI applications to understand that review, whether this review is positive or a negative review, so I can make use of analyzing text cognitive service. And translating text is always a common thing, so one language to another language. I can translate. So suppose, as I said, as I am speaking in English, it could be translate to a Hindi at real time. So with the help of cognitive service. So this is something like, you know, the processing the natural languages. Reading the content of a paragraphs and making. A kind of or maybe analyzing that paragraphs. According to our need would be done through the cognitive service. Now take a look of what goes inside the analyzing text. Now analyzing text is not only go and talk about positive or negative, what I'm saying as a sentiment analysis, but apart from that, NLP, nature language processing, what we have already talked about language detections. So we already use one of them, but remaining features like key phrase extraction. So there are some keys that you want to extract from a document. From a text. You can do it sentiment analysis. I was talking about an example of a reviews. Name entity recognitions. A particular entity entity may be a, the name of a place name of a locations, name of a country and cities, and so on and so forth. Entity linking. Suppose you want to take it to the Wikipedias from a particular entity of a documents. So which Wikipedia you can see for more details on a particular entity that is also can be, you know, identified with the help of language services. And this is also we can go and add as a stand stand in on language service or we can have a multiple service cognitive service like we talk about. So this is your NLP service, the language service. The text is going to go inside. You can detect the language. You can detect the key phrase. You can detect the entities and you can link with the wikipedias and you can detect the sentiment of this particular text so all can be possible from a one single service called language service it's up to you how you want to operate them so 
So to understand the determine the language in a text is written offer the useful as a precursor. For the features analysis that requires and known languages. So this is the document that we talk about as an ID last time we did. So we can also provide a hint saying that this is being used in the country like US. So that is the collection of one or more documents all will be going in a form of JSON. And that is the string to be analyzed, the text to be analyzed. And the output after coming out of the analyzing language detection, which already we have done, ID1, detected language. This is what we have done so far. Key phrase extractions from this particular text. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. In this document, we have mentioned the language, but we have to extract the key. So what key then we are trying to act, extract? The changed world. That could be a list of key phrases in the document one. Miles, single steps and journey would be another key phrases from the document two. This is the two outcome. By using the key phrase extractions, what we have seen in the document out there. Identify the main talking point of the text. That is the key phrase. Work based with the larger documents up to. You know, 5120 characters. Sentiment analysis that what we talked about. And it is an interesting one because that analysis can be done based on some outcome. It could be a positive, it could be a negative, it could be a mix or it could be a neutral. The score overall document sentiment and individual sentence and sentiment. Sentence sentiment is based on confidence score for positive, negative and neutral. Right, so that is what we can see. This is a kind of text. So what it says is my life is go good. So what is the kind of score that is me? Overall confidence 99% is a positive one. Neutral is 1% and negative is 0%. So this is how you can kind of. Uh, you can go up to a sentence, you can break down the sentence and talk about positivity and negativity sentence, location sentence, confidence. Sentence sentiment. And so on and so forth. Name entity recognition, there is a list of. Predefined entities for the cognitive service. They can identify person, locations, date, time, organization, address, email, URL, others. So these are being treated as a entity in your text. So we get to see. Entities. So person entity, location entity, date time entities and so on and so forth. Category person. 62, 
eight percent, something like this. The date time. So like your link link entity linking. So this is what I was saying that link to the Wikipedia's. I saw a Venus signing in the sky. He used to. OK, this ambiguity the entities. So if you have. A Venus can be used for two reasons. So for example, the Venus, a planet or a goddess. So this is basically, you know, so we can take us to the Wikipedia and talk about the Venus in this context, in this context of this particular document. So that is something that we need to go and. So name entity becomes a Venus. The Wikipedia, which is unique article IDs of a Venus, it will take you there. And there would be an article link that is going to be produced and you can go into articles and know more about the Venus in this context. Of the document. So here it said the Venus is a mythology and here is just a plain simple Venus, what is basically talking about the planet. So people will go and get more detail, more elaborated information by using the cognitive service, what we can see. So let us go and see one example of this NLP, what we are talking about. So let's go back to my workstation. And I'll go to my. Text analytics. I go to kind of. So first I will go and get the cognitive service endpoint and cognitive service. A key. So this time what we can do. I can create not a multi service kind of cognitive service. I can create a. A service which is a specific. to the text or language resources so I can go and say language service so I can go and create. From all service. I go and AI and machine learning. I can go to the language. That is the language service. I can create it explicitly. And it says what this language service can offer me. It says sentiment in a key phrase. Pre built question answering. Conversational language understanding name entity recognition text summarization text analytics for health and so on and so forth. So I just go and. Pick up the resource group. I give a name. Demo. And LP. And the pricing. 
So I'm going with the free. I can make 5000 transaction for 30 days. So that is what is all about. It is for just to test. Networking, we are not configuring identity. We are not configuring at this moment. And then we go and create it. So this is done. I can go to this resource group so we can see that is my language. So this time we are creating an independent service rather than creating a multi service resource. We are creating a single service resource and that is going to only talk about language. It's not going to talk about image analysis or something else. So now I'm coming back to the program here and we need to. Install the package called Azure AI dot text analytics like we did before also. In the previous. And then uh, we go to the program one. So we can see that. We are going to go and kind of import. This two already we have incorporated, so I go and change my. Oh, this is fine. This is a dot net seven. So OK. And now we go and start getting so first we'll go and get the. key and the endpoint first, so I'll go and copy the key and put it into my. Let's close this one. Into my app setting. This is where I'm putting the key. And the endpoint. And now we can come back to the program, so this is the same statement that we have been repeatedly writing to read the cognitive service endpoint and the service key. And this is where I'm going to go and put a different language to understand from the reading console. I'm going to go and. Get into the folder called review, so there are a few reviews files. You can open these files. This is a review about the hotel. This is the review out there. OK, 
Okay, so reviews. Now sometimes the review can be written in other language also, because since it is a language, so review can be written in any language. So my cognitive service need to summarize. So cognitive service service should be able to identify whether it is a negative review or a positive review or a neutral review or some other reviews. OK. So. For that, we can go and setting up my directory locations from where those file would be picked up with an extension txt for all the files. And we are going to read those files. And then we have to go and get first the language from the review. OK, so that is something that we would be doing out there. Yeah, so all fine, so we need to go and keep. Working with the Git language, so I can just go and get the language there. OK, so I should be able to go and. So I need to go and make use of the client stuff, the credentials and the client here. So using this particular client, we are detecting a language, the first one. So first we need to detect the language from those. Uh, a review file. So I can go and. Dot net. Bill. And we go and say dot net run. So we are going through all the review files. The first reviews. The language is English. Language is English. Language is English. Language is English and finally the language is in French. That is the first that we have detected by just making a call to a function called detect language by sending a text as a parameter to that. Then we can go and get the sentiment there. So what is the function that I am using? Analyze sentiments for this particular text. So let's run it one more times by just commenting this too. Once we have detected that one. And now we would be going for a sentiment. So the first, if you read this, 
particular review. It says the positive review. That is what we got from this. The second review is a negative one. It all now required to change and so on and so forth. The internet did not work, had to come to out of the office room to check. And this is a negative sentiment. There is a mixed sentiments that you received. Maybe few stuff are good and few things are not good. This is also a mixed. And this is also a positive that is written in French. And then we go for a key phrase. So what is the functions that we are using to extract the key phrase that is called extract key phrases? And it may be more than one key phrases. That's why the for each loop is being used. And to type the phrases from every. Reviews that we got it. So this is also being. Only we are primarily focus on those function. So we get to see about. It's a key phrase. So what are the key phrase that we got from the first review? That is the key phrases. So key phrases related to a, a kind of entities. Yeah, because the important point that is being given focused by the reviewer, whoever is reviewing, these are the key phrases that we got. That is also being seen and finally we can just go and take a look about the entity part. So how am I going to go and see the entity there? There's a recognized entity. So the function is recognize entity that is going to work on the text. That is also we are going to get more entities. So that is also for loop. And we should be able to print the entity text and the entity categories. Right, so you are going to get more entities now because entity is anything that can be represented. The key phrase is also there. Entities is there. So in fact, we did not comment the previous one. But you can see this. This is an entity within bracket. That is the category that we are talking about. Date, time, address, locations. Most of them coming from the locations, person, type, address. These are all entities. You can see the product. These are entity that we have extracted from there itself. 
So we are going to say a entity link there. That is that will take you to the Wikipedia link. So on the same text and they will go and give us a extensive link. That we can differentiate between. The keyword by letting me know. The details by bringing. The Wikipedia for that particular key phrase. So what we got right there. Suppose in a review too, it's so a good music. So if I go and. See, this is the good music. That we get to see. A hotel. Right, so that is. If you want to know more about that particular entity, so you should be able to go and kind of get in there. Yeah, so that is what. You have those stuff. OK, so you can be more elaborate by just say recognize the linked entity by putting a text as a parameter to those functions which in turn go and make a call to the language cognitive service and language is capable of language cognitive service is capable of delivering this kind of capability what we are looking at at this moment. So it's a one of the most powerful kind of. NLP service, the Nessar language processing service, what we are discussing at this moment. So the bottom line is that this service, the language service that we are using at this moment support. Analysis of the text, including language detection, sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, Entity recognitions and of course, entity linked. And in this case, what example that we are talking about, a travel agency wants to process the hotel review that have been submitted by the company's website. So by using an Azure AI language service, they can determine the language of each review written in the sentiment, whether it is positive or neutral or negative of the review, the key phrases that might indicate the main topic discussed in the review and the name entities, for example, like places, landmark or a people mentions in the reviews. So today uh, this is kind of a use cases where uh, people may go and make use of this language service what we are looking at to analyze the text. Like the another way uh, that we can go and make use of translating the text like we did an analyzing a text. And we can do that. Some kind of 
translating a text from one language to another language. That is also possible. So if I go back to this uh, translating a text that we are talking about from the NLP in itself. So we should be able to look in that. So let me go back to my. So we can say a CD. Text. Translation. So we can get the same. E that we have here. And here we need the locations for translating the reason. That we made it something like you remember. Uh, yeah, so we just need to check under which region. So it's an East US. So cognitive service. Keys and. Uh, the regions that is required to have. So for that we need to go and add a minute so just So we need to restore all these things. So dot net restore. So trying to build this application, there may be some warning, but that's fine. So next time we should be able to get all OK. So I close this and reopen that. Should remove this. So we got this one. So there is a translator universal endpoint that we can see and the rest we are going to go and so the same review folders. The read the content. Detecting a language first. This is what it says default language is being said to use the translator to detect the functions and and use the translation. So we can go and 
make use of those functions for detecting language. It's a get language. So this is where probably you should be able to write the code to get the language here. And finally return the language that you can see. This is the code for uh, detecting language, then we can go to. Translate. Right, so so what we are saying that this is to already you know that because this is the key and the region that we are passing slightly different out there. And we are finding the language of that particular text in the review. And then probably we are translating. to get translations so what kind of translations that you want to do so that is being controlled by the previous one. So your detect language is being written out there and the language that you want to translate to so you can pass as a parameter. Translations if not already in English. So it means you would be able to translate that review that was written in French to the English. That is what we are talking about. OK, so. This is the translate method with the text and the language that we can see. But how this. Get language and. Translate method is being written. This is just a kind of asynchronous programming to do the translations out there. So return the translation result. So with that, I can just go back and run it. So I can again make it .NET build and .NET run this time. OK, so this is basically taking. Your. Uh, the review things out there, so that is your basically. Getting in the reviews of all text. Forex to the get files, everything that we are going and making it. So there is only one translations that is being made. So if this is not being. In English or something like that, that translation has to happen. So but there is a. The array from the buffer, so that has to read more into it. Uh, but we can just validate that one for doing the translations. But what I'm telling you this, this is basically to understand 
the one thing from the translators, like it could be a, a real time translations or it could be a static content translations. That is all about cognitive service. So you can make use of this cognitive service to go and translate that text. So a little bit of change that I need to know for increasing the buffer size. But uh, in general, so by using the cognitive service, the NLP, the text language, not only the things that we did in the previous example, we can translate the text to a particular language here. So I just need to go and give the name of the language that you want to translate to the text. So that is what the translated text that you are going to see. If the language is not in English, so you should be able to translate this. So you are detecting language first and then going back and start keep on translating this. So get language, setting a default out there. Detect version 3.0 zero or whatever the code is. This is the API that you are doing and return the language type. So what language is being after detecting? So once that is done, then you can run the next one. The get language is done. So you can translate it one also. So subsequently you are making a call to the trans so source language that you want to translate this. So anyway, so that is the functions that we are making it. So it's it's easy. It's all about code only. So finally, what I want to do, I want to go and walk you through with this particular exam phase. So if you want to take an exam, you can go to the exam page from the learn.microsoft.com and US credential and certifications AI 102. So it will give you what are the module is being covered here. These are the modules that is being covered during this exam. You can go to the study guide. There is a study guide link there. And from the study guide, you will get to take a free assessment, practice assessment. So that will basically give you lots of questions. And those questions, if you can attempt and if you can correct them, and they are going to give you the answer also if you miss that. Uh, the question so you can keep practicing before you take the exam. So this document is very important. All the links that is available. So anything is being updated like August. 23 is the latest updated happen on this particular course so that you can go and see what is being updated. But what exactly that you have to read so all the details out there. All right. So I just wanted to wind up here because uh, this is how it will keep going. The process or understanding of this cognitive service would be remain same. The rest is all about the coding only. But I guess that you got a fair idea how the cognitive service can be used in what context and the relevant concept about securing the cognitive service by putting key in the key vault, monitoring the cognitive service by using the monitoring engine, running a cognitive service inside a container to get more control on your data. And these are the very important aspect what we discussed today, but going forward, the rest is all about service and exploring them and writing from the code, calling from the code, nothing else. Yes, one of one of the topic would be interesting working with the bot 
that would be a conversational uh, AI. So in that case, probably the bot development would be more robust uh, under this AI uh, 102. So if you have any questions before we wind up and uh, thank you everyone for attending this today's session. So Setali, if you are there, so if you have a final comment to make. Hello. Yes. Hi, sir. sir yes, Tanvir. Tanvir. Uh, sir, I'm Tanvir on behalf of Chaitali. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you, sir, for this wonderful training on AI 102. And if participants have any question related to topic, please drop them into the chat box. And meanwhile, request you to submit the feedback form. And uh, participants are requested to get their batch activated. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for attending this. Thank you, thank you everyone.